Today we're going to tour the entire apartment from the Jeffersons. That's right, the whole thing. Hi, I'm Marina Coates. Welcome to Behind the Scenes, where we get up close and personal with all your favorite TV and movie homes. Today, we're moving on up with the Jeffersons to that deluxe apartment in the sky. We were all rooting for George and Wheezy when they moved from the Bronx to the Upper East Side. Today, we'll explore every inch of their apartment. I'll even take us back to the parts we never got to see on the show. Let's get started. We'll begin with an overhead view to get our bearings. This is the entryway with a half bath off to the side. This area is the living room with a bar tucked back in this corner. Over here is the dining room. Both the dining room and the living room have doors out to the terrace. This is the kitchen, and on this end we have Lionel's room, Florence's bedroom, and the master's suite. As you enter the apartment, there's a small pink bathroom on the right. We get to see the inside of it in season five. Today you'll see it on the tour. The entryway also had a short railing separating it from the living room. We never got to see this wall in the living room. That's the fourth wall where the cameras were. So what to put there? There would most likely have been a TV since the main seating arrangement is here. And I'm sure George would have a stereo in all its 70s glory. And what better place to have it than on this fourth wall? A couple interesting things in the living room architecturally. First is this angled wall here with the opening to the hallway and bedroom wing. It's a common thing in set design and mostly for staging purposes, but, and here's the point, it could be done in any home to add interest and drama as it does here. One more feature I'll point out before we tour the living room is this partial wall separating the living room and dining room. It helps define the living room and dining room as two separate rooms, but it also allows for furniture to be added on either side of it, such as the amazing bookcase in the Jefferson home. To show you the difference it makes, here are before and after shots with the partial wall taken out. It gives it two distinct looks. Each version has its own merits. Which do you prefer? Now let's tour the living room. Later when we do the full tour, I'll take us out on the terrace too. One of my favorite things on the Jeffersons was getting to see the wardrobes of George and Wheezy as they entered a room. Each of the actors had their own real-life, moving-on-up stories. Isabel grew up in Harlem, the youngest of seven children, but the only one to survive infancy. As a teenager, she wanted to become an actress, but her mother strongly discouraged it. Luckily for us, Isabel went ahead with her dream. In 1960, she moved to California with her three children. Soon after, Tallulah Bankhead asked her to join a national production. From there, it was Broadway and the movies. And then, of course, to TV. Her role on All in the Family proved so popular, Norman Lear asked her to star in a spinoff, The Jeffersons. Fun fact, Isabel was 21 years older than her TV husband, Sherman Hemsley. She went on to win an Emmy for her role as a lead actress in a comedy series. To date, the only black actress to ever win in that category. The question in this room again is what might have been on that fourth wall? In one episode, we were shown what appears to be a dry sink or cart here, so I added that. And since their table's big enough for six, but they usually just kept only four chairs around the table, I put two extra chairs over here for when they have extra guests. 
We rarely got to see this corner of the room, but here we see what they had on that wall. As you can see, there's a big stretch of wall here that we never got to see on the show. We only ever saw to here. But to make it match the width of the entryway, it would have been this wide. It could easily be an extra entry into the kitchen, even though we never saw anyone go in or out that way. I'll show it to you with and without an entry door there. You decide. Having a pass-through opening into the kitchen is very common in TV homes. It helps with scenes where the characters need to keep their actions hidden from the others, but it also makes it so that the set for one room doesn't even have to be in place while the action is taking place in the other room. But of course on this show it also allowed for some hilarious interruptions. We'll tour the dining room now, and later you'll get to see a tour of the entire apartment in one take. In the full tour, I'll walk us through in a direction that allows us to see views we never got to see on the show. The kitchen. Fish don't fry in this kitchen and beans don't burn on the grill but it is deceptively large, coming in at 396 square feet. It appears more cramped than that on the show, but that's due to the odd angles and never getting to see this wall. In one episode, we were shown a movable island cart along that wall, so you'll see that in the tour. And I'd love to hear your ideas in the comments below for what you might do with this space right here. It could possibly be a pantry, but the other side of the wall is the stairwell for the building. Let me know what you think. And now, let's tour the kitchen. Later, on the full tour, I'll add the second entry into the kitchen down on that end, and we'll walk through that way. Florence might have been a bit lax in her responsibilities as a maid, but in real life, Marla Gibbs is anything but. Marla grew up in Chicago. She was working as an airline reservation agent in Los Angeles when she started getting her first acting jobs. At age 44, she landed the role of the housekeeper Florence on the Jeffersons, which was supposed to be a one-time part, but she proved too popular for just a guest role and immediately became a regular. Fun fact, she kept her job at the airlines while playing Florence in the series for quite some time after, just to play it safe. Marla went on to win five Emmy nominations for her role and recently received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. In this overhead view of the master, we see the placement of the bed, the closet, and the bathroom. We never got to see inside of the bathroom on the show, but we did get just enough of a peek to see a towel bar here. We never got to see this section of walls here. I chose to use this area to give George a place to get away from visitors and relax. One of my favorite features in the home is this wall behind the headboard. It has a plaid wallpaper and is pulled out about a foot with two recessed shelves painted a dark orangish red color with lighting inside. It makes the room. And I love the little alcove with their closet in the back. A shout out to the set designers. Thanks for bringing this home to life for us. And now we'll tour their work and some places we never got to see on the show.
Sherman Hemsley gave us an unforgettable character on the show, but his real-life story is pretty remarkable, too. Sherman grew up in Philadelphia. He didn't meet his father until he was 14. After serving in the Air Force, he moved to New York, working for the post office during the day and as an actor at night. He was in the Broadway musical Pearly when he was discovered by Norman Lear, who wanted him for the role of George Jefferson on All in the Family, a character that had been heard of up until then but not seen. Two years later, he was starring in his own show, The Jeffersons. Fun fact. In an interview, he described that famous walk he does up to the apartment building in the opening of the show. He said there were several takes that day, and so he started trying different things. And in that take, he was just kind of feeling in the moment about how lucky he was to be getting his own show. He was nominated for both the Golden Globe and an Emmy and also won an NAACP Image Award. So where was everything back here? The camera never followed them back, but we have some clues that help, and I love a good sleuthing challenge. When anyone enters the master bedroom, they're coming down a hallway and entering straight on. For that to occur, it would need to be at the end of this hallway. We know Lionel's room was here, so that leaves this space for Florence's room. I opted to add a laundry room. There is an episode where the maids mention a laundry room in the building, but surely a deluxe apartment in the sky would have its own laundry room. So I chose to believe that the one referred to in that episode is an auxiliary laundry room. In the first episode, when Florence makes her appearance, Louise mentions that they have four bathrooms. Since there's a half bath in the entryway, that would mean that each bedroom has its own bathroom, so I've added them here. We'll tour Florence's bedroom now, and her room is all about comfort. I took cues from her wardrobe and from the 70s as to what it might look like. Some things to note before we tour Lionel's room, and before we take the full tour down the hallway. Some of this might make you sad, but don't shoot the messenger. We are shown the door to Mr. Bentley's apartment as being here, but that's impossible. That is where Lionel's room is, and they can't coexist no matter how you dice it. Also, Lionel's room would be unable to have a window. We're also shown this chair as being next to his door, and that's where the hall closet is, so again, it's not possible. Moreover, windows are shown on all of these sides of the apartment, but that doesn't line up with the building we are shown on the exterior. The shot of the apartment building from the opening of the show is blurry, but here's a nice clear shot from a site called Rob on Location who visits TV and movie home sites. You can see the window layout we are shown on TV is just not possible, but hey, I'm willing to suspend belief if you are. Now that that's out of the way, let's tour Lionel's room. I made the room as close to what we were shown on TV as possible considering these limits. We'll tour the full apartment now, back hallways and terrace included. Next month, in December, I'll post a tour of the apartment decorated for Christmas.
Remember, a Christmas tour will be coming out next month. But as for today, that's a wrap. See you next time on Behind the Scenes.